Nick Angstead from Locked On NBA here, joined by Wes Goldberg of also Locked On NBA and Locked On Warriors to talk about the Golden State Warriors. First of all, how are you feeling about this team? <laughs> it's been a roller coaster of a year in that they're kind of exactly what we expected them to be, like a 500 team going into the season. But the way in which they've been a 500 team has just been so up and down with like the injuries and the whole James Wiseman experiment and the Steph Curry scoring spree and everything that's going on with this team. It's like the most exhausting 500 team I think I've ever covered. <laughs> I feel like so many people are saying that right now. Like, oh, this team has just been so exhausting. Corrales of the Celtics. Um, Mavericks had their... I, you know, their I can't compare it to the Celtics. I, I don't know how he does it. That seems like a nightmare team to cover right now. <laughs> Speaking of all the injuries, you said the Wiseman experience, all that kind of stuff. Who's in the playoff rotation? Who do you expect coming into the, the play-in and then the playoffs? Who's going to be there? And then which role players are going to matter the most for the Warriors? Yeah, because of these injuries, Steve Kerr has basically been down to an eight-man rotation over the last month or so. So you've got Steph and Draymond. You've got Andrew Wiggins, who's been their Iron Man this year. Uh, you've got Kevon Looney now starting at center with Wiseman out for the season. Um, and then you've got Kent Bazemore right now slotted in at shooting guard with uh, Kelly Oubre dealing with this nagging wrist injury. It's unclear if he'll even come back for the playoffs at this point. We don't know. There's wow. no timetable yet. So uh, those are your starters. And then you've got a three-man group coming off the bench of Michael Mulder, Jordan Poole, and Juan Descano Anderson, uh, which if the Warriors make the playoffs, this might be the first time a lot of people see those players or watch those players. Yeah. Um, and, and Juan Descano Anderson in particular, he just signed his uh, – he signed a uh, – he was on a two-way contract for most of the year, and he just signed a standard 15-man deal yesterday or on Thursday. And uh, he's kind of been the revelation of the season for them. What he does off the bench is sort of like mini Draymond Green-esque. And, and his playmaking at, at a forward spot, his ability to guard several different positions, he's making threes at a nice clip now. Um, he's sort of unlocked that group, and he's going to be uh, one of the more interesting guys to watch uh, in the postseason. You always hear draft prospects. Oh, he's coming up. He's going to be a Draymond. You never expect a guy on the actual Warriors to be <laughs> to be the next right. Dray Draymond kind of guy. Uh, this Warriors team, obviously we know, we know Draymond, we know Steph. What are the biggest strengths and weaknesses of this team overall? Draymond and Steph, right? <laughs> it's, it's basically it. <laughs> uh, it's Steph. It, the, the whole construct of this thing is they have they have a top five defense and defensive rating. So that's the de and, and Draymond Green captains that. But all the guys, you know, you've got Wiggins, Bays, Morkavon, Looney, just all of them solid. Even even Steph Curry at this point is, is an average defender at his position. Um, so you don't have any weak defenders, and, and that's what I and, and you combine that with just Draymond Green's leadership on that end, and uh, and that's how you end up with a top five defense. And, and then basically it's Steph Curry on offense. Like if you could just put a top five defense in place and then if Steph could score 30 plus points a night and you get contributions here and there from the rest of the roster, that's how the Warriors have won games. Now it's when the Warriors don't get those contributions from those other players when they lose those games. Which, hey, that's it kind of rises and falls on leadership, rises and falls on Steph and Draymond. Totally makes sense. The win profile of this team, we've seen some, some pretty big wins. We've seen some big moments from Curry. What are the best wins and the worst losses for the Warriors this year? The best wins are their most recent ones over Utah and then Phoenix on back-to-back -back nights earlier this week. I mean, those are the two top teams in the Western – two top teams in the league by record. Yeah, huge. And uh, to get – they need it, they needed to get one of those games in order to uh, be in the running for the eighth spot in this playing tournament. They ended up taking both of them. And, and look, Utah was without Mike Conley and Donovan Mitchell. I get it. Um, but – and they were both played at Chase Center. But those are still two – got to give credit where it's due. And those are two tough wins – uh, that both came down to the end there. And uh, and I think if you're the Warriors, you have a lot of confidence going into a potential first-round series against one of those teams because it's going to be one of those teams that you play if you make it out of this play-in. So those are easily the best wins for the Warriors this year. As far as the worst ones, uh, they've had 11 losses by 20 or more points this year, uh, including a 53-point shellacking by the Toronto Raptors. That was maybe the, yeah. the sort of the basement uh, point of their of their season. And, and they've had a number of close losses as well. They're 14 and 16 in games that are decided by five points with uh, five minutes or fewer um, left in the game. And, and those Phoenix win, the, the Phoenix and Utah wins were sort of a change in the right direction for them. But I still don't know how much I trust this team in clutch situations, especially in a playoff setting, because like I said, everybody knows who they're trying to get the ball to. Does it come down to who can do something else besides Steph? Because teams are just trying to take Steph away in the clutch. Is that what it comes down to in some of these clutch losses? 
Yeah, and, and look, if you look at the, the Phoenix and Utah games, you got 17 points and 19 points from Kent Bazemore. What are the odds that that's going to happen every night? Very slim, yeah, right? Yes, Bradley Beal, they're not very high. <laughs> Bradley Beal doesn't think so. And <laughs> uh, uh, and that's really what it takes. You know, you got 38 points from Andrew Wiggins against Utah or, or, or Phoenix. I can't remember which one. They all blend together at this point. <laughs> uh, you need those contributions from those other guys. Draymond Green is starting to score a little bit more lately, like early in the year. If you got a point from Draymond, it was like, cool, that's great. Now he's getting about like eight <laughs> yeah. to ten points a night, uh, which is which kind of changes things. And like I said, you get a guy like Juan Descano Anderson coming off the bench, or Jordan Poole has his nights where he'll put up 18 points for you. Those are the nights, like I said, those are the nights when they win these games. Uh, and those and, and when those guys come up late, uh, it's that's when the Warriors win these win these clutch games because everybody else is going to be double and triple teaming Steph. So there's going to be room for these guys to score. They just have to do it. What are the stakes for this team going into the playoffs? Is there any kind of, you know, is it all just, you know, butter or gravy, whatever they do in the playoffs? Or will there actually be big stakes for Draymond, Curry, Kerr, you know, any of the big Bob Myers, any of the big players here for the Warriors? No, I mean, look, everybody's comfortable. You know, Steve Kerr, Bob Myers, they're not facing any sort of hot seat. Steph has an extension coming up this summer, but I don't think that they're going to weigh playoff success in whether or not they want to give Steph the max. Uh, And then Draymond Green's under contract, so... Nothing big there. The biggest thing for this group is getting into the playoffs, right? Like if you fail to make advance into the actual playoffs and this playing tournament is not the playoffs. I don't count that as the playoffs. <laughs> you have to make it into a playoff series. Uh, anything. Uh, if, if you lose in the play and it's a disappointment, it, it, it's a failure on this season, but it, because to advance to the playoffs, you're getting at least four games of playoff experience for guys like Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole, Juan Escano Anderson. And, and these guys who are going to play a meaningful role next year when Clay Thompson comes back and you're going to try to return to being a title contender in some way, shape, or form. You need playoff experience in order to sort of trampoline into that next stratosphere in the Western Conference. And if they don't get it, I think they're going to have a hard time getting to where they want to go next season. Last thing here, what are some national narratives that you think are wrong or misunderstood? Is it just that Draymond doesn't score? Curry? I mean, the national narratives about the Warriors are Curry's amazing. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It seems pretty about, positive. But. It's about accurate. Like, Curry's pretty amazing. Draymond doesn't score <laughs> that much, but he's really good on defense. Like, we know these characters. I think the biggest national narrative that I push back against is this team will be fine when Klay Thompson comes back. Mm. And I think what we learned this year is that that's not so. Like you add Clay Thompson in the mix, great. Like it's, but I think what we saw with Kevin Durant this year is even when Durant's on the floor, he's awesome, but he's so rarely on the floor at this point. It just takes so long to fully come back from these Achilles injuries because you have all these other nagging injuries that kind of pop up and, and things like that. So not only just so the injury part is is one thing. Like he is going, it's going to take a minute for him to come back. But let's say you get Clay Thompson at a hundred percent. Let's call it right. This team is still not ready to go win another finals or, or make it to another NBA finals. There are a, a lot of holes in this rotation. Uh, even if you get Clay back, you're still going to be relying on the Kent Bazemores of the world to score 15 points a night. Like you just, there needs to be some depth. There needs to be some tweaks to this roster. It starts with getting Clay Thompson back, no doubt, but there's other things that they need to do. Random curveball I'm going to throw you here at the end. It seems like this season, nobody in the West fears anyone else, right? Like, and no one fears mm-hmm. the, the Jazz or the Suns. No one fears really the Lakers because they've been banged up. Do you think this Warriors team thinks that they can beat a Jazz or a Suns going into the, the playoffs? Do you think that they fear either of those teams? You know, it's funny you ask that because if you had asked Steve Kerr this, and I have like about a month ago, they he basically said, we're not making it to the finals this year. It's just... It's true, but it's weird to hear the head yeah. coach say that, you know, but he's always been very realistic and candid in that way. And he ba- and he's like, you know, they're not making it very far. You're trying you're going to try to make the playoffs and, you know, quote unquote, make noise. Right. Um, but I do think that the Warriors over this recent stretch, you know, they're going to probably end this. If, if they win these next two games, they're going to end the season at 15 and five over their final 20 games, which is pretty substantial. Yeah. Over the last 15 games, they're number one in net rating by a mile in the NBA. And they're playing with a lot of confidence. And I do think that if they make it, to a playoff series, they believe that they can win that series. I don't. I don't think a lot of people do, but they do. And uh, and I don't think that would have been the case. Yeah, that's all that matters. As long as you believe in yourself, right? Right. What's the Ted Lasso quote? You know, do you believe in ghosts? No, but more so, I believe that they should believe in themselves. That's right. (laughs) There you go. Wes Goldberg, go follow him on Twitter and, uh, and the great Lockdown Warriors podcast. Thanks, Wes. Thanks for having me.